297C. Two ninety seven C. Yeah, I kind of look at it and don't. At first, I thought. You sure, you don't want to do another mechanism problem. <laughs> All right. I, I decided to give you a break. <laughs> um, the P attached to three phenyls. So usually, that kind of all of a sudden, when I look at that, that reminds me of bidding. But at the same time, there's not, no double bonds or anything, so it doesn't look very bidding to me. Yeah, that's the same. And I forgot, and I didn't have a table. In Okay, so um, this is just to predict the products. We just want to know what the products will be uh, from this. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Suppose I gave you um, all right. So we have to do a little bit of a warm up first here. What would happen in this reaction? Draw it like this. Basically, we're going to switch partners across the double bond. Right now, the carbon is partnered with the phosphorus. What's well, going to partner with this carbon? And this phosphorus is going to partner with this oxygen along the double bond. This might be a good way to draw it in this case, so you can see the switching that's going on. So, erase So as usual, I like to use the redraw and modify technique. I've just redrawn the original, and now I'm going to switch partners. The phosphorus is going to move down, and the two methyl groups are going to move up. So where the two methyl groups used to be, I'll put the phosphorus triphenyl, and where the phosphorus triphenyl used to be, I'll put the two carbons. Oh, and then we're done. That's all you have to do. So again, this might be a good way to line this up. Again, this is the Wittig reaction, right? So a good way to get the right products in the Wittig is to line things up like this and then just switch partners across the double bond. Okay. Uh, so, uh, all right, so that's our Wittig reaction. Very good. Now, what do you need for the Wittig? You need this. Um, and remember what this is called? An illide? You heard that term? Yeah. Yeah, so this is an illide. Um, so you need an illide. That is a carbon double bonded to a triphenyl phosphorus. So the general form that this would take would be... This is the general form of an illide. In order for a Wittig reaction to happen, you need something that looks like this. Which is why you were puzzled, because it seems like we don't have that here. So why is it connected to two hydrogens then? Oh, so in this case, I'm using the R to be either a carbon chain or a hydrogen. Just, I just wanted to draw this so as should general. Should the carbon then be directly connected to the double bond? Oh, yeah, it is. You know, this is a normal way to write condensed notation. Oftentimes, so this does show the carbon attached to this, just like if you wrote. If I had wrote. It's not the height, these three hydrogens aren't on this carbon, it's this okay, carbon. Okay, but I can wrote the C on the right side. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay, if you want to. Sorry, never mind. You could write it like that. That's okay, fine. And in this case, the H's are instead of the R. Yeah, the H's are these other R things over okay. here. Okay, so the point again is this is the general form that an illide looks like. So you need an illide to do a Wittig reaction. And an illide looks like this. Okay? All right. Um, so, as you correctly diagnosed, we can't do a Wittig reaction here because we don't have an illide. Okay. So going back to here, um, so it's good that you know what an illide does, but do you know how to make an illide? Let's go through how to make an illide. Uh, or actually, is that what actually is going to happen? I guess so. So, all right. 
right, so here's how you make an illite. You take a um, alkyl halogen. You take a carbon with a halogen on it. Let's see what would be a reasonable reaction to have happen here. Um, well, who would be uh, a reasonable nucleophile here? Isn't it the carbon? This carbon actually would be a good electrophile because it's bonded to something electronegative. This would be a halogen. Maybe I can make, well, this could be pretty much any halogen. Maybe I'll use bromine here. I think, actually, I'm not sure. I think you can use other halogens too. I don't see why not, but I'll, I'll put in bromine. So anyway, this is a normal electrophilic carbon, right? This is normal electrophilic. Neutral phosphoruses are good nucleophiles. Neutral phosphoruses are decent nucleophiles. How many things um, are attached, attached to phosphorus? Like, you know how um, an S can have is, is P like special? Is it the Lewis acid? Kind of asking it. Yeah. I'm sorry, say it again. Is P like a Lewis acid? Or yes. Okay, so what does that mean again? It means that it wants to donate an electron pair. So how many things does P usually have attached to it? Oh, well, it's like nitrogen. It's right underneath nitrogen. So you know the nitrogen, to be neutral, this is I what see. a neutral nitrogen I looks see. like. So, so there's that lone pair on it. Ah, so yeah, so it has a lone pair. Okay, great. So Remember it's PH3. Yeah. That's right. Remember, if you see an element you're not used to, ask which column it's in, and that will tell you what it behaves like. This is in the column of nitrogen, so it behaves like nitrogen. Um, why is that carbon only attached to three things? Oh, hydrogen. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, just like a nitrogen, a neutral nitrogen would have a lone pair. We know a neutral phosphorus has a lone pair, and just like neutral nitrogen is a good nucleophile, neutral phosphorus is a good nucleophile. Um, so what's the name of the reaction that we're doing here? Essentially, I didn't notice there were those lone pairs. Okay. So you can attack that carbon, like an SN2? This is just an SN2. This is a normal SN2 reaction. Good nucleophile, good leaving group. Secondary carbon, at least. So we end up with... This. Okay, so this is the first step of forming the elite. You take an, uh, a halo out, uh, what do you call it? A, a, um, a halogen, with a carbon with a halogen on it, and you uh, attack that with a phosphorus. That gives us this. You can see we're well on our way because we've gotten the first phosphorus carbon bond. Now we need the second phosphorus carbon bond. So the next thing that you do is you put in a strong base. Uh, you put in a strong base. What do bases do? They take protons. So the base will take this proton. And then we have to think, is there anything we'd like to do with this pair that's going to be liberated when we take that proton? Oh, just transfer it. That gives us the second bond between the carbon and the phosphorus. This is how you make an illide. So step one, um, you have the triphenyl phosphorus that attacks a carbon with a good leaving group. Um, and then you have a strong base that takes a proton that liberates the other pair of electrons that you need um, to form the second bond over here. All right, and then what do you do with the illide? Well, you do a bidding reaction with it. Right. Okay. It's important not just to know what to do with an illide, but how to make it in the first place. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. 